Welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> Some of my older subscribers, uh, they uh, will probably remember, and I'll put a link in this one. Uh, I had run across a radio that was called a Silver Bell, and it was a blonde-looking radio. It didn't have a dial, but we believed that, and, and the handle was gone, and we believed what happened was that it... Uh, uh, something for whatever reason uh, someone worked on it and took took that off and just put a, a solid grill cloth in it and, and uh, uh, I end up with it well someone reached out to me a couple of years ago and said that uh, they had a silver bell in pretty good shape and so we we negotiated and and uh, I end up uh, buying it and sure enough and the video is <laughs> the other video was called a mystery radio and to this day this is still a mystery this is a silver bale it was made in 1935 and uh, it was manufactured by Silverman Manufacturing Company in Oakland California and so if anybody knows anything about that, I would certainly appreciate it because I've contacted the Historical Society, the Radio Historical Societies of, uh, of California, and they have not even heard of this before. So um, uh, it's one of the West Coast radios. So it was made in 35. Now this is a TRF radio. And... Um, if you'll notice the grill kind of shaped like a bell and in the, I don't know if you can see it or not it's kind of discolored it's kind of yellowed there's a bell in the center here and it's silver bell right there on it uh, and some of this stuff <laughs> I've, I've shot this this second time I've shot the video because when I went to upload it to my laptop, I don't know what happened. There was only pictures. There was no video. So I'm having to redo all this stuff. So it, it's kind of rehearsed right now. But um, the closest that I've been, you know, and, uh, and, and the word bail, I, 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 and, and I'm making this stuff up as I go. Silver, did that come from Silverman? manufacturing and bell was that it was he in cahoots with herb bell of uh, jackson bell packard bell uh, i don't know um, i can't find any relation to it whatsoever um, did the gilfillan brothers build this i don't know so far the closest schematic i have found is a Peter Pan Model 34. And I've already started going through this and started videoing it and what have you. And so I'm having to go back <laughs> on this first part. But uh, I'm going to try to go through this and you guys help me along the way. Uh, the knobs, uh, they've got set screws, which I've already loosened once. So I didn't tighten them back. I was going to show you... Uh, the back of it. it's a real heavy little radio it's got a transformer in it okay uh, it's got a long wire antenna uh, four tube uh, and let me give you a close-up of, of, of some of this stuff now here's one of the interesting things look at how it's fastened there's only one screw and the screw goes all the way through the chassis uh, the other one, the other mystery radio that I've got over here on the bench, uh, it's sister or brother or cousin or whatever you want to call it, was fastened in the same way, and I thought it was rather odd. But uh, I'm going to show you these labels, uh, how nice they are, and you can read them for yourself, and maybe you can help me determine what. We'll, we'll play Magnum PI and figure out what it is. Let me get a close-up of these labels. 
Okay, there's the label. As you can see, serial number 1382. There's your 90-day warranty. Silver Bell, manufactured by Silverman Manufacturing Company, Oakland. Uh, and that's part tore off, but uh, on its uh, on the other one over here, it did have the Oakland, California. Of course, here's all the patents. Uh, let's see if I can get rid of some of that shadow. There we go. This was manufactured uh, at factory number 11, and these are all the patents by RCA and various, and you know, you've seen a lot of radios do that. So let's pull this out of the chassis and uh, we'll look at it. I wanted to show you the uh, uh, dial itself. And um, like I say, I've already shot a lot of videos, so we've actually taken it apart. And you'll see it in much more detail than, than what it is. Uh, all it's got is an on-off switch and the tuning knob. And there's the handle that's on top. That's just come off of a drawer, apparently. If I pull the tubes out. I'll throw those on the tester here shortly, but I'll show you something that, that I found on the original, on the number one. And there's a date. October 26, 1935. I believe it was October 28th was on the other one. But you can see accumulation of dust. I'll take some compressed air and, and blow it out. And uh, that says 11M. And if you'll remember in the older days, for instance, the potentiometer says 10M. That does not mean meg. That means 10K, 10,000 ohms. So um, let me check these tubes and blow this out and then we'll uh, do some troubleshooting. Uh, we'll start at one end and, and see if some of these components are good. Okay, this was kind of loose. One reason was the screw in this corner. Looked like somebody might have had that off at one point. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take the, uh, the indicator off. I believe it's held on just by those two. That way we can protect the speaker. <laughs> it's pretty. Uh, this bulb in here looks like it's soldered to the chassis or the case of the dial, and the wire is uh, soldered to the tip of the bulb. That I. I'd hate to think that's original, but you never know. So let's, let's see if I can take this off without sticking that through the speaker. Okay, we got that off. And let's see if we can get this screw out. Oh, it's got a, that was a self-tapper down on the bottom. This one's got a nut on the back. It'd be a good thing I'm shooting the video so I can put it back together. We'll, uh, we'll take a closer look at this uh, indicator when I get it off. you can see the bulb is soldered. Now I'm not quite sure how this works. The dial string has to come through this slot. Let's move this over. You can see the dial string basically has to wrap around inside there and as you turn the tuning condenser it flips that. See if I can get a close-up. 
Let me see if I can take this plastic out and get a better look at this. Wonder if there's anything I can do to get that discoloration out of it. I don't know. Um, as you can see, I thought that was hummingbirds, <laughs> but I don't think it is. I think that's uh, just some sort of graphics on it. Looks like there is a screw, dry, a screw head that holds that dial on. And that'll go all the way around. Now, I don't know how you hold that. Let me look at this off camera. Okay, let me show you how I got it apart. I took my exacto knife and in the very side inside there there's a brass shaft and it has a slot in it and I was able to take and put that knife into that slot and hold it and loosen this screw which held the dial on Otherwise, it would just spin around. Then, I basically just took this, and this is in really, really good shape. The last thing I need to do is to break it. And as you can see, this little tab is breaking. It just broke. And that's what holds the plastic gizmo on. It's what holds this on. So... Before we do anything, we're going to have to probably put some little tabs on this to hold uh, the plastic in. But uh, then this just slipped out. I'm going to try to take a good, high quality picture of this and maybe send that to uh, Radio Days uh, just for their records. In case somebody else needs it I don't know how many of these are out there now here's the little uh, brass shaft I was telling you about it's got the slot in it there so but the best I can tell the string is fastened underneath this looks like a rivet however looking down inside there it looks like it may be threaded so I don't know I'm gonna set this all this aside for now I just can't believe that bulb is soldered in there like that that might have been a fix you know but uh, um, We'll have to figure this one out, how this, it's probably almost a direct drive, but we got to figure out how that string attached, and I think if you can see there, I don't know if you got a good light there or what, but you can see that looks like the string, so we'll have to figure that out before we go back with it. So let's go on. Spend enough time on this for right now. We're not gonna fix it tonight. Like I said, this is a TRF. Um, and been reading a lot about Jackson Bell and Herb Bell. And for some reason, I'm aiming towards that. But it, it, Silverman Manufacturing, I cannot find anything about it at all in the 30s. So maybe somebody else can come up with it. <clears throat> but one of the things that just kept nagging at me was that Jackson Bell, they started having financial difficulties in like 31, 32-ish. 
and but they had a lot of parts built for a lot of parts inventory for TRF radios when the, but even though superheterodyne and regenerative regenerative receivers were coming out but they had a large inventory so i'm just wondering since this is a TRF from 1935 was this just an attempt by some West Coast company uh, to, to utilize the parts that they got for a song and they sang it themselves. I don't know. But um, anyway, let's let's go over what we have. We have a pretty good uh, hefty transformer here. Got all the numbers on them. Um, the speaker is about a four inch speaker. Uh, there's the uh, uh, output transformer. It's got a speaker coil. Uh, it's a Jensen speaker, by the way. And uh, so here is the 76 tube. That's the detector. This is the uh, 6D6, which is the uh, RF amplifier tube. Of course, the 80 rectifier tube and the 42 audio amplifier tube. Uh, let's turn it around just a little bit. And you can see this has uh, got the spring and very simple mechanism. But this is the antenna coil. Uh, of course, it, the antenna wire comes up and connects to it also. So let's go underneath. Let me get a better angle on the camera and we'll go underneath and we'll look and see what it looks like. Okay, like I said, let's go over the schematic a little bit. Uh, this is the Peter Pan Model 34, which is also has the same tube complement. Um, as you can see, I've already been doing a little bit of troubleshooting, but we'll go through it even more. Uh, it's got the transformer. Uh, the 80 tube is here. Uh, the rectifier, it's got two, four, microfarad filter capacitors, got a filter choke or the speaker coil which is acts as a filter choke and of course the output transformer up here the 42 tube the 76 tube and the 66 RF amplifier tube um, uh, of course, the antenna coil itself with the long wire and the 10K potentiometer. In the earlier drawings, the M stood for a thousand. That was Roman numeral for a thousand. Uh, I, I'm trying to see, and but you see right here, it says two meg. So the word meg ohm or Meg was written out on the older schematics. Now later on, um, uh, people started using 2 Meg or th they would use M, but in the older schematics, the M stood for thousand, okay? So that's the schematic and we'll go through this and we'll tr troubleshoot the components and see what's there, how similar it is, any variants or anything like that. Since we can't, we can't locate, we don't even know if there's a drawing out there for this. Okay, if you remember, we started with a transformer. Uh, right here's the, of course, that's the long wire. I, I believe I'm going to end up cutting that off before long because it just keeps flopping. But uh, the power cord came in this grommet. And this is pretty neat. They had terminal strips um, uh, for some of this stuff instead of just tying to the other components. But uh, this is the uh, terminal strip for um, uh, the, the power cord. And then from there, it goes up to the on-off switch and the uh, potentiometer. Um, 
This is the 76 tube. This is the 42 tube. This is the 80 tube. And this is the 66 tube. Uh, this is the uh, interstage transformer. Um, on your TRFs, um, the, the, you know, the later the heterodynes or the super heterodynes, you, you had the IF transformers and, and uh, between the interstage and uh, the way it works. But basically all this one does is it's, it's tuned circuits, tuned radio frequency circuits. And so you've got your uh, signal coming in on the antenna coil, and it's tuned with the, with the variable co uh, condenser. Uh, then the, it goes through the 6D6. Uh, it's amplified. Then it goes through another tuned circuit, and that's this one right here. It's a transformer, and it boosts the signal up somewhat and it's in the in the range of where it's tuned at and then it goes to the detector which is 76 which will detect and, and convert that to an uh, uh, an audio and then it goes to the 42 which is amplified which goes through the loudspeaker so it's a it's a fairly simple circuit but this is the um, uh, the, uh, the interstage transformer this uh, big block here is the uh, capacitors. Uh, there's two of them in here. Uh, both of them are four microfarads at 600 volts. That matches our schematic. Uh, we'll go through and see if it matches the way it's laid out also. Uh, if you look, I'm not sure that anything has been changed in here. So we may have one that hadn't been really, really looked at. But, so what we'll do is we'll look at the schematic. We'll start probably with the, with the, with the power supply, troubleshoot, go forward, and, and go through and, and check. You know, what, what, what's it, what are the important things when you're troubleshooting a radio? Okay, yeah. People want to know if it's a transformer. Transformers are fairly expensive, right? The other is, what about coils? I don't want to have to rewind a coil. Another big one is the speaker choke, or the speaker coil. You know, the, that's a game changer if that's bad. And uh, so uh, these interstage transformers, you, that's, uh, that's all important. Your resistors, your capacitors, your wires, they're not a big deal, but those are the big game changers that we, we need to look at. I've already pulled the tubes out and checked them, and they all test high. They're all looking good. So I think we're going to have this thing playing not in, in, in very short order. Let's do a little basic troubleshooting for the uh, power transformer. As you can see on the schematic, <clears throat> here's the transformer. Uh, it's got the power cord. Uh, it's got a switch in line that goes to the primary. And uh, then, of course, you've got uh, the top uh, on the secondary side. The top is the uh, windings for the rectifier tube, which is the 5-volt windings. Then uh, in the center, the bigger uh, is the high-voltage winding goes to the plates, the uh, rectifier tube, the number 80. It has a center tap which goes over to the uh, negative side of the 4 microfarad uh, capacitor and also the speaker choke. And then the bottom secondary is uh, the 6.3 volt winding that goes to the rest of the tubes. You see one side of that is grounded. So uh, let's take and we will connect to the uh, to where the power cord goes and so let's check and see it's showing about 22 ohms let's turn it off okay we've got that now let's turn it back on and look look at the the way it's 8 meg and it's I believe the switch needs good good cleaning or it could possibly be bad 
but initially it showed good so it's probably just uh, dirty so let's bypass the switch uh, if you look right in here this area here this lead and this lead is the primary uh, uh, leads to the transformer so if we just skip that switch all together and clip right here we should see the primary and the primary is reading around 21 ohms uh, so we think that's pretty good all right let's see the 80 tube itself is sitting right here and so the the uh, filament will be pins one and four which should be this one and this one and so let's see and it should be something fairly low and let's see what we've got here there's about about 0.5 ohms that looks fairly good so while we're here on another tube let's go to the filaments for the 6.3 uh, since this one was supposed to be 5 volts this one's 6.3 so we, we we should see a little bit more than 0.5 uh, do, you, do you all agree with that so let's go uh, the filament on the on this one will be pins one let's see here's one let's see there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it'll be one and six. So let's go from one to six and see what we get as far as. And so we're when it settles on out, it's about 0.8. So that's the winding for that. All right, the high voltage winding itself. Uh, we can go to pin 2 and 3 on the 80 tube, which is here, between pin 2 and 3 on the rectifier tube socket. Uh, we're, that's the high voltage winding, and we're showing about 816 ohms. So if you look at the schematic, the center tap goes to the negative side of the first four microfarad filter cap, at the junction of it and the uh, speaker uh, coil itself which goes to right here so we should see approximately half of that 816 so there we go that's about 425 and meter timing out and so we go to the other side the other pin and we should see approximately the other half of it in this case it's 391 so it looks like the uh, uh, transformer itself is good so let's check the speaker field coil and it's at that junction on the negative side of the first filter capacitor the four microfarad and it should tie in just above uh, this 400 ohm resistor uh, let me pan up there's the 400 ohm resistor here remember the BED yellow black brown so that's the 400 ohm and we said that this was the uh, connection. Let me get the uh, get it up to where you can see the reading. Uh, there's the um, there's where the filter cap and the uh, coil is uh, the junction for it on that terminal strip, and this end of the uh, resistor is to ground. So this one is where uh, uh, this other side of that field coil is tied in and I really don't know what it is um, but it looks about like 
2.495-ish or something, 2,500 ohms. Uh, I've looked at some of the other of this time frame of the mission bell and and all those and some of those others and 2500 is correct so and i believe that the the field cold is is okay so we're going to document it is um, around 2500 okay let's check the antenna transformer itself um if you'll see here on the schematic, um, one side of this front coil is to ground. I've already got that connected to ground. And the other end of it is either, it's one side is connected to the potentiometer, the high side of the potentiometer, or the long wire antenna. I cut the long wire off. Uh, to get it out of the way, but I left uh, a little bit of it and so we'll check that and we're reading right at two two ohms or so Okay, so we believe that's okay The other side also goes to ground so we'll keep that but it also goes to the grid cap of the uh, of the tube which is on the other end uh, it was there all the time I just couldn't see it but uh, here's the grid cap as you can see here and it's reading about 5.2 or so so we believe that to be good okay let's look at this transformer here which is this one which is this one physically located there and so what this does is it couples the RF amplifier uh, tube to the detector tube so it couples the signal uh, between this and matches the impedance and it's also a tuned circuit which allows certain radio frequencies through there Okay, um, the top part of this coil is connected to the plate, and this is also where the, the voltage goes uh, to the plate of the 6D6 tube. So it goes through this coil, okay? So we'll want to connect to the plate of the 6D6 tube. Also, if you'll notice down here, this is the B+. Plus. Uh, here is the first or one of the filter capacitors the four microfarads here's the other one if you'll notice the positives are connected together which feeds this B plus line if you will look this goes over to pin 3 of the 42 tube so if we were to check between the plate or pin 2 of the 6D6 and pin 3 of the 42 tube we will read what this coil is reading so let me pan up and we will find the SD6 tube here is pin 1 remember it goes clockwise here's 1 2 so we can just clip it right on there now this is the 42 tube and this is uh, pin one. Now in the, these older tubes, the bigger pins uh, are the filament. So the first one, the one on the left, the, there's two of them. The first one on the left is pin one, and then it goes clockwise from there. So and we want to go to pin three on the 42. So here's number one, two, and three. And if you'll notice here, these two lines here these two leads are the uh, positive leads from this filter capacitor okay so that's uh, that's a good sign that we're in the right spot so let me pan back so you'll see the reading so let's go to pin three that's one two and three and we'll connect there and we'll be reading approximately ten 10 ohms, maybe a little less when it settles out. So 
that looks okay. So let's look at the other. Let's pan down just a little bit and let's look at here. Now, the other winding of this goes from pin three of the 76 tube and it goes to ground. So if we go from ground to the pin three of the 76 tube, we should read this winding also. So let me pan back up. So we'll go to ground and then our 76 tube should be, where should it be? It's uh, right up here. And so we said it would be pin three. And this one is uh, laid out a little differently. Uh, the pin three is the one that's out from in the middle of it. If you can see, there's a bigger space here, here. There's no pins in between. These are evenly spaced. These four evenly spaced and this one's out. That one's always pin three. So that's one, two, and pin three. And that's the pin we want to connect to right there. And we're reading just over five ohms. So that transformer we believe to be good. Okay. The output transformer is fed from that same B plus that if you'll remember where those two capacitors intersected. One, one side of it is coming off of it and also the other side is coming off of uh, pin 2 or the plate of the 42 and that should give us the primary of the output transformer. So let's pan up see what we've got. Remember this is our junction where both our capacitors are the B plus line and then we want to go to pin 2 of the 42 tube. So here's pin 1, here's pin 2. Uh, let's see. I'll make sure you get it. I'm not breaking in a new cameraman tonight so you will have to bear with him. So now we go to, to pin 2. There's 1 and there is 2. And so that output uh, transformer primary is reading approximately 488 ohms. Now here's where we get into a little problem here. The secondary will go down and connect to the voice coil of the speaker. If we check this with the voice coil in place even if this is open, you will be get a reading. So unless you disconnect it, you're not going to be able to really test the secondary side unless you lift one of those legs. All right, I decided to go ahead and lift the one lead off of the uh, secondary of the output transformer. So I'll clip the lead to it and go to the other side and perhaps you can read it and it's approximately 1.6 ohms so while I'm here I'll just go ahead and check the voice coil itself and it is reading right at 5 ohms so I'll solder that back before I forget it so it looks like everything is in order let me get that uh, reading because I want to document it because uh, this is the only schematic known to man at this point in time. We're going to call it one point. We'll call it one point three. Okay, so we've been through the radio from front to back, checking the components. This schematic is very, very accurate. Um, the differences that I found is in this radio, there is a uh, bypass capacitor on the AC line, 
we'll replace that with a safety cap. Um, it wasn't, was not in the Peter Pan radio. That's what, what's different. Also, instead of a two meg resistor, there was a one meg resistor in this radio. Um, I looked in the other silver bell that I have and it's also a one meg resistor. Um, so uh, the rest of these values are very very close. Now there's some capacitors uh, that uh, They're not exact, but they're in the same place. So I'm just going to replace it with what's in it. Apparently it worked at one point. And, uh, but uh, that's the only real differences that I see in this. So I'm going to recap it, and uh, then, then we'll bring it up and, and see if we can't uh, uh, make this thing play. So I'm going to finish uh, this, this part out for right now. And I thank all my subscribers. If you like what you see, share it. Hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Uh, but I uh, uh, appreciate you following along this journey with me. And if you have any information on this thing, be a Columbo. <laughs> Help me out. Try to find out where this thing originated. So, from Larry from the hills of Tennessee, thanks for watching.